G'day everyone. Well, at the start of the month, 27 days ago, um, Grace Tong, was the Senior Legal Advisor of Broadcasting Standards Authority New Zealand, responded to me. What she did is she sent me uh, the letter or the response from TV New Zealand's Complaints Committee um, to her. And this is what they wrote her. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide further commentary on Mr Keane's referral. TVNZ had responded to the points as they are raised in Mr Keane's referral, listed under accuracy. Okay, now they're trying to say um, standard 9 does not have a requirement where they are supposed to give acknowledgement. Well, it's because I'm talking about the Broadcasting Standard Act, uh, or the Broadcasting Act 1989, whereas they're talking about Standard 9, which is part of the Broadcasting Principles, okay? So they're trying to shift the goalposts. Um, as an authority is aware, the, uh, the standard provides that the source of the material broadcast is part of the assessment of whether or what is shown is accurate. As explained in the TVNZ decision under copyright law, the fair dealing principle means Virgo is able to use small parts of a YouTube recording for news reporting purposes. No, it wasn't. Um, they weren't reporting news, they were reporting fallacies. Um, which is what occurred. Please also refer to keen additional information exceptions. A, a fair dealing work with other than a photograph. For the purposes of a reporting current events requires sufficient acknowledgement. Unless the reporting is by means of a sound recording, film, broadcast or cable program. Fair go is a broadcast program. So what is it? A current affairs program? A broadcast program? A news program? What is it? I think they've got some identity issues, or they just changed the goalposts to suit themselves. Um, in any case, the Broadcasting Standard Act 1989 is not designed to determine copyright issues, and so this issue cannot be considered by the authority in any meaningful way. Okay, so they just used my shit, my voice, m misrepresented what I was showing on my videos, and stuck it to their huge pile of crap that they tried to pose off as truth in their narrative. Um, let's see, uh, in any case, so we'll go, this, uh, now this is the bit where I'm talking about three weeks prior that I sent Virgo everything, I sent them links to all of my videos to show them that all of the facts were up and be careful about what they were about to fucking broadcast. This comment concerns material which Mr Keane has produced and published, not TVNZ, and so has no relevance to the formal complaints process, other than the fact that you've ripped it all off. Mr Keane's publications are not subject to the Broadcasting Act, I know. For the authority's reference, these publications include the following comments. Oh, how good. Now this is where they start tattletailing to the Broadcasting Authority. Um, in one of my videos, yes, I do say. So. These dickheads, and I'm meaning TVNZ and Fair Go, really need to have something handed to them like their ass, and I'm just the type of guy who's going to enjoy doing it. Try hiding behind YouTube, you cocks. See, I love the fact that they've even censored the word cocks to a lawyer. I mean, they're trying to make it out like they're so prim and proper. Fair go, breakdown, shakedown. If someone else wants to start shit, I'm happy to finish it. You know, all of these things that they're quoting here, yes, I did say. Now they have a problem with free speech, do they? Listed under fairness in the referral, parts of this segment include, now the Broadcasting Act is not designed to determine allegations of defamation. No, but the High Court is, and we'll see you there shortly. Um, Please see the TVNZ response to 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 16 to 20 below, which substantiates this claim. Okay? It says that it's not designed to determine some other, so the authority is not able to consider this allegation in any meaningful way. T yeah, they don't do anything meaningful. Um, TVNZ advised Mr. Keane of this and his options in the TVNZ decision. Oh, yeah? Well, great. Awesome. I've got lots of options. I, did I ask for legal advice from you pricks? No. Um, please see the... Oh, yep, seen that. 
no inference was made concerning who the photographer was or who or what business that they were working for in the Fair Go program. No, you made it out that there was some stalker hiding in bushes. You even showed a camera and some foliage and made it look like someone was filming her at her house. I'd like to point out that I just happened to have driven past her house. I know exactly where she lives. Me and Andrew went for a little drive one day just to see one simple fact, and that was she's claiming people were hiding in the bushes photographing, uh, taking photographs of her, or videoing her. Who knows? Well, her house is down a, a right of way, so she's a back house, and the cul-de-sac <laughs> is brand new. There is no bushes or foliage anywhere around her house to be hiding behind. So, another misrepresentation there from Fair Go. Completely inaccurate. Um, let's see. TVNZ notes that a candid photograph of Miss Kelly appears in the news story. She was texted from the freelance journalist. Yeah, okay. Well... Steve Cook took a still shot from the video that I've already showed on YouTube of when Andrew Peck, along with one of his workers, was returning the vehicle to her. And he had his worker record the interaction, it was only like two minutes, if that, where he's dropping it off saying, here you go, she doesn't say a word to him, she pulls out a car seat, because he went around there to pick up the loan vehicle, um, and then that was it, off they went. Steve got a still shot from that. That's no candid photograph, TVNZ, you idiots. He grabbed a still shot from the footage. Um, TVNZ does not agree that the statement is unfair to Andrew Peck or Universal Imports. Oh, I don't care if they agree or not. Please see voice of freelance journalist from 31 seconds in the item which substantiates this claim. TVNZ does not agree this is... Uh, does not agree this is an unfair statement Mr. Keane states in his referral that the entire phone call between Steve Cook, the freelance journalist, a uh, freelance reporter, who also had wrote the article Breakdown Shakedown, and Sabon Kelly, which she claimed on the show to be intimidating. Yeah, that's why you guys said the freelance journalist was supposedly intimidating. TVNZ did not name Stephen Cook in the Fair Go item, however TVNZ does not agree that this is unfair to characterise Stephen Cook as a freelance journalist, given his recorded history in the print media. For example, New Zealand Herald, Len Brown scandal journalist Steve Cook on P charges. So now they're trying to defame Stephen Cook to the Broadcasting Standards Authority by saying that someone's on P charges and another article here from Stuff reporter fired over drug rumours. Rumours! Nothing substantiated. And I've met Steve. No way he's a peahead. Um, it was actually really vile what he was saying about me. Um, and my son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cry me a river, someone. The Facebook post is shown in the program at 39 seconds to 43 seconds. Andrew Peck is feeling scared. Beware of good people, West Auckland. There is a Karen loose. Okay? Now, let's look at this post. Nowhere in it does he name Sabon Kelly. And in fact, Fear Go identifies Sabon Kelly as the Karen in their article. Andrew Peck never, ever mentions Sabon's name in any of the posts. Okay? TVNZ does not agree this comment is unfair to Andrew Peck. <laughs> Please see attached document which contains a copy of the news story which Mr. Keane has identified as being written by Stephen Cook. This was sent to Ms. Kelly's phone. It contains photographs of a champion kickboxer, Andrew Peck. What does a champion kickboxer have to do with Andrew Peck in a car sale? And why not extraordinaire Sabon Kelly in a fight for ultimate supremacy? In the news story, it states champion fighter Andrew Peck left in despair after deal over second-hand Audi goes pear-shaped. A fuller transcript of the news story is available under six. Below TVNZ does not agree that the characterisation is unfair to Andrew Peck or Universal Imports. And then there's another bit. It just goes beyond belief that a professional outfit is conducting business in our community. Okay? I think that this is unacceptable. Alright? This is Miss Kelly's opinion and presented on such as such on the, on the program. TVNZ notes that numerous attempts were made to contact Universal Imports... Mark Keane, me, 
and Andrew Peck for comment to be included in the items on the issue in the story as outlined under fairness in the TVNZ decision. That is a complete lie. TVNZ, fair go, never once contacted me the three weeks before the airing of the show. I contacted them asking for Official Information Act requests, wanting to know salaries, wanting to know some answers from fair go, whether or not they were going to portray lies or not, you know, those sorts of things. I emailed them and I got fuck all of a response back from them. Um, not once did I get contacted in relation to Universal Imports in their Fair Go program. That's a complete fucking lie. In fact, please, TVNZ, Fair Go, go ahead, produce an email where it shows it was sent from you to me about the show. I'd love to see it. Because it doesn't fucking exist, you lying sacks of shit. And now, you're lying to the Broadcasting Standards Authority. Um, Andrew Peck, to be included in the item stories outlined under fairness, and that's just lies. This statement is supported by the facts as outlined and confirmed by Mr. Keenan and his referral under background. It's all linked to a West Auckland car dealer. Well, that's what they said. Um... The news, the news story contains statements about what happened with the car between Universal Imports and Sabon Kelly, including... Okay. It's still just bits out of the news article. TVNZ does not agree that the statement quoted here is unfair to Andrew Peck and Universal Imports. Mr. Keane said the comment and published it in the public sphere. YouTube have a complaints process if you have an issue. TVNZ does not agree that it is unfair to include this in the fair go item. Um, in the news story shown on the screen, it's possible to read the following top right hand side. It's a day Andrew Peck wishes he could wipe from the calendar. Yep, righto, whatever. We've all read the story. TVNZ does not agree that the use of this comment or attributing it to Andrew Peck in fair go was unfair. Um, it's ignored the court's ruling to pay back Sabon and... Yes, I'm owed um thousands of dollars, stated by Sabon Kelly. No, she isn't. Virgo discusses when Miss Kelly received her payment in the item into the program. This accurately represents how the settlement payment happened, and TVNZ does not agree that this comment is unfair to Universal Imports or its owners. In the Facebook comment Universal Imports posted, referenced in 16 to 20, Universal Imports outlines the timeline. The car has been picked up, the finance company has been paid out by us, and we are currently looking at our legal options and lodging claims against her for damage done to our loan vehicle that we lent her and the damage done to the Audi while she has had it. In the small claims court, before we pay the small amount remaining to the courts have awarded her. Um, then it goes on, so that's what they're saying. Irrespective, fair go, make out that it's because they got involved that they scared Andrew into paying them. That is not what fucking happened. And you can go and see Andrew's own words from his own mouth and the interview I did with him. Seeing fair go aren't trustworthy enough for car people or car dealers to actually have conversations with without it being skewed out of context. The news story is provided to the authority. Mr. Keane has attributed it to Mr. Cook in his referral. Steve Cook, who was, whose work was used several times within the segment. Yeah, well, that's right. TVNZ does not agree that the characterizations of the news story as unpleasant reading for Ms. Kelly is unfair. Really? Well, un unless they've got their dick up Ms. Kelly, how the fuck is TVNZ going to be able to speak for another person? Hmm? I didn't hear her saying it was unpleasant. Um, moving on. The dysentery comments, yeah, yeah. The absolute misery, yeah. Mr. Keane said the comments and published them in the public sphere. Yeah, I read out an article written by someone else. Very much like you did, fair go, on your TV program. Um, TVNZ does not agree that this is unfair to include this information in the fair go item. It's an item now. Is it a show? Is it a news story? What is it? Stop changing your minds. Um, then there's a few more other points. Uh, so she's talking about sharing her review off the Massey Community Facebook page after she posted it up on Google. So she didn't just post it to one place, did she? No, she shared it around. Uh, 
this is presented as Miss Kelly's opinion. Universal imports and its owners were given fair opportunity. Yeah, Universal import and its owners were given fair opportunity. Not me, you lying sacks of shit, so you best correct that one. On the issues raised in the Fair Go story, which they did not provide as is their right. Universal Imports reply to the post is shown on the screen. Yep, okay. Nowhere in this reply does Andrew Peck identify the Karen or the lunatic fucking woman or whatever you want to call her as Sabon Kelly. It is Fair Go that identifies Sabon Kelly as being the person in this, what this is referring to. It's, it's no one else but Fair Go that identifies Sabon Kelly as this person because Andrew made damn sure he didn't put her name anywhere in the posts. Um, TVNZ does not agree that the presentation of this information is unfair to Universal Imports or its owners. Neither is the, the weeks of abuse that they got after your show aired. Yeah, no, that wasn't unfair either, was it, Fair Go? Or the abuse that they've copped. Um, the post is shown in the program and has been transcribed in TVNZ response at 4. TVNZ does not agree that the presentation of this information is unfair to Universal Imports or its owners. Universal Imports and its owners were given a fair opportunity to provide their comment. Broken fucking record, raised in the Fair Go story, which they not to provide as is their right. No, they don't respond because they knew that you would spin it. As Andrew said himself. The email that the Fair Go reporter reads is copied here in full to assist the authorities' determination. This is the email that Gil reads out to Sabon, and Sabon reacts, Oh my God, what a terrible business. How can they operate? You know, she's acting like Andrew Peck sent this. Nowhere in the show do they say, we and do they just say, and the emails kept coming. But they didn't say from who, and this one was from Stephen Cook, to Gil Higgins. It was not from Universal Imports, they had no input on it, neither did Andrew Peck, although it was posed as him writing in this email to Gil Higgins. And as you can see, they've admitted it themselves, it was sent from Stephen Cook on the 29th of October at 12.14. Nowhere, no, at no time was this sent from Andrew Peck, and yet they read it out on that show and got the reaction from Sabon that they wanted to dog Andrew. Okay, there's the whole email. I've already posted it before they even aired their show, so why they're doing it, I have no idea. Um, as you can see, on 29th of October, Central Car Company wrote they forwarded it. Um, they forwarded it to their New Zealand uh, to the legal team. Uh, Universal Imports sent it to, to, to Central Car Company. And then we have this one from Bill Higgins to Universal Imports and John, which is the lovely man at um, Universal Imports, the car salesman. Follow-up email from Fair Go. Okay, this is sent to Universal Imports. Nowhere, because it doesn't exist, is there any correspondence between Fair Go and me. They lie. Um... Okay, if you have another way, alternatively, we'd be grateful if you can contact him and pass on my details. He didn't want to speak to you, Gil. I understand that you have requested a full copy of the emails referred to by the complainant when he is discussing his own productions, which he has published on YouTube. These productions include the emails from Gil Higgins to the Universal Imports. A, a full copy of the emails. As Mr. Keane has referred to some emails which have not been included or referenced in the Fair Go broadcast, they have limited application for the determination of the formal complaint. The Broadcasting Act 1989 is designed to regulate material which has been broadcast, and these emails have not been. Yeah, they have. On the public sphere. Don't forget, Fair Go, you like to point out when I've put something in the public sphere, and I have put those emails. Again, lie. Um, and you're aware of it because I sent you links. And these emails have not been. I have, however, included the material which was re referenced in the broadcast for the authority. The copy of the news story which TVNZ has came from Miss Kelly's phone, and so it is difficult to read. I have transcribed it as much as possible in the response to assist the authority. Well, don't worry, I transcribed it just fine. 
please let me know if the authority requires any further information on this complaint. Kind regards, Andrea. Complaints Committee, TVNZ. Pieces of shit. Bought out paid media. So there you go. They think there's nothing wrong. They've lied to the Broadcasting Standards Authority. And the lovely lady at the BSA is going to be getting a response from me tomorrow pointing this out to them. Alright? So, yeah. Uh, again, uh, whether the Broadcasting Standards Authority upholds any complaint or not, um, you guys can make up your own mind in the court of public opinion. Everything is published, so you've just got to go and look for it on my channel. Um, I would point out that on the 21st of March, YouTube terminated my main channel with over 3,450 subscribers on. Um, they terminated it because of a Lingo Louie uh, video that I mirrored. Ironically, the Lingo Louie video was still up, and the one that I mirrored was still up on my subsidiary channels. They just decided to tell me that it was full of medical misinformation. I hit them with two appeals. The first one they ignored and said, no, nope, we're leaving your channel terminated. And then the second time I pointed out that they were draconian, hypocritical, um, pointed out that there was no medical information imparted and gave them the link of the original video which still remained up on YouTube and then all of a sudden they turned it back on. However, they didn't give me back all the privileges. I've still got hit with two weeks of no uploading, no posting, yada yada yada. It's just given me heaps of time to get my new channel up and running as well. There is CKA Mark of the House of Keen back up which used to be the Families for Justice channel. There's the Pinnack NZ on YouTube. And now there is Injustice We Trust, which I am slowly uploading back catalogues of entire series of stuff. So you guys can all have a look at them. Um, so feel free to go and subscribe to them. I'm also on Rumble, Twitter, Blogspot, Pinterest, Odyssey. Um, what's the other one? Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, also on BitChute, uh, also on, um, I think, Instagram even, um, I'm on Signal, I'm on lots of things, on Discord, um, so there's lots of ways of contacting me if you guys want to, or if you want to follow. To all of my loyal subscribers that are on my channel, please jump over and subscribe, because I don't know how much longer my main channel will last given how YouTube are behaving. Um, when they turned my channel back on again, I got hit with 42 copyright hits of music and stuff, which don't count as strikes on the channel. It's just interesting that they turn it on and all of a sudden they get hit with 42 copyrights. That was funny. So anyway, that's the end of it for me, guys. Have a great day. And um, that's what the BSA have said. I will um, keep you all well posted in the future. See you guys.